we're speaking this morning to Eugenie Chan. She's the co-founder of the Supergood Collective and founder and chief vision officer of Supergood PR. Good morning, Eugenie. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Yeah, of course. My pleasure, always. Now, tell us about your skin condition. At what age did you realize that you had psoriasis? Okay, so before I go into what age, uh, I'll just share a little bit about what psoriasis is. So psoriasis is a auto, an autoimmune disorder, which basically is that your immune system has gone haywire. So for example, I have got a, let's say I've got a patch of skin and uh, people think, uh, and, and my body thinks that, oh, there's something wrong there. So I'm going to go quickly and I'm going to build lots of skin cells to try to protect the area, except that's a false signal. Right, so it's the reproduction. So psoriasis is technically the reproduction of skin cells seven to nine times faster than normal. Okay. Um, so is that's what it is. Like so eczema? It's not quite. Okay. Um, eczema also an autoimmune disorder, but psoriasis presents slightly differently. Okay. And uh, I think psori- psoriasis as well. Uh, so for me, anyway, I also developed psoriatic arthritis. Uh, so after many many years. Um, so but I, I first started when I was sixteen. All right. It appeared um, on my scalp as if I had dandruff, supposedly dandruff, and I got very offended by the <laughs> by the uh, hairdressers telling me I got dandruff. I'm like, I don't think I have dandruff. Like, what do you mean? Um, and then and then I had a couple of patches on my body, and so then I was like, okay, what is this? I went to the doctor, and the doctor initially uh, initially said to me, oh, uh, no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, here some cream, right? I'm not sure what he gave me exactly. Um, and, uh, and of course, me being me, uh, no, there's no way that's, that's, the, uh, that's the answer. There's something worse than wrong, you know, further wrong with me, right? Um, so <laughs> so I, I researched and I was like, I think it's psoriasis. Um, and then I went to a different doctor and they said, yeah, it is psoriasis. And I was like, okay. So in hindsight now, I, I, I see that maybe the first doctor, he was just trying to maybe play it off and say, look, it's not, not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Uh, purely because, you know, at the end of the day, it's the immune system and uh, your stress really affects your immune system at the end of the day. Um, yeah, so that's basically how it started uh, when I was about 16. Yeah. So were you very stressed when you were 16? Was I very stressed? Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, turns out I put a lot of uh, pressure on myself. Um, and, uh, you know, because my, my parents are pretty chill, you know, they're all around, they're like, yeah, 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 whatever, as long as you pass, that's great, you know, uh, <laughs> all good. Um, but for me, um, so when I was in, for my PMR year, I, I was actually a student of the year, uh, because I scored straight A's, and on top of that, I missed school for about three to four months, because I was doing all sorts of activities. So I was winning a lot of medals, uh, running, I was in athletics, I was netball, I was no, gymnastics was another year, but yeah, something along those lines. So, in fact, they even named me like uh, the uh, vice president of the athletics club, which I didn't even know that they had placed me there. Like, I just got to, like, you know how they do a school announcements and they're like, okay, we're taking pictures for this, 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 Eugenie Chan, uh, can you please come down? You're part of the athletics club. So I'm like, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, so I had scored like, really well obviously uh, student of the year and of course the next year from four I was like yes you know what nine A's is not going to sound nice I must do ten A's okay let's take extra subjects all right because uh, you know ten A's will sound nicer much nicer than nine A's and obviously that's a lot of pressure that I put myself and then halfway through from four I realized oh no maybe I'm not able to do this it's so much harder than form three uh, you know form three is all multiple choice this is you have to write stuff oh no um, and so I, I believe that that was what it was, but I think, uh, I think it actually stems back further than that uh, in terms of that programming that I have um, kind of developed uh, as a child, obviously, that there's really, really high expectations, right, obviously. So I'm not sure, well, <clears throat> it has to have come from somewhere, but I'm not going to say who. Uh, <laughs> um, the underlying cause of this psoriasis is not only due to stress, right? It's mainly genetic as well, isn't it? 
I think it's highly debated, but yes, there is some genetics involved. I mean, it's just like how you would have a predisposition, predisposition towards, say, cancer or heart issues. It's kind of the same thing because, I mean, obviously there's some genetics that, that comes down. So why you present with one problem versus another, yeah. right? So I, I would say on my father's side, we've got a, I've got a couple of cousins who also have psoriasis. Uh, and I think I've got one uncle somewhere along the lines. Um, yeah, uh, but, my, but my immediate family, none of them have psoriasis. <laughs> so I was a uh, special yeah. So I skipped a generation, I suppose. So how bad did your psoriasis get? Oh, hmm. Uh, really bad. <laughs> um, actually, so when I was uh, at uni, uh, which was in New Zealand, um, I, I decided to go on to some, I would say, harder drugs. So initially, it was just like topical stuff. And then I started uh, ingesting uh, some, something, right? Uh, yeah. Some medication. Uh, and from there, because it's systemic, my whole body became... Uh, so it made the, the skin really thin. So basically what it did was it stopped producing skin cells for you. Like it stopped the production of skin cells, try to stop. But then all the rest of the body, which is not affected, everything gets really thin. So I'll be really puffy as well because uh, you can't like control the... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure why, but you get really puffy as well, bloated. Uh, and, you know, like I, I would get blisters all the time because that's how thin the skin is. Yeah. Uh, that I can't even wear shoes properly. Um, and then I the think... The side effect out, of the medication. Yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. So coming out of uh, that medication, uh, the doctor actually said to me, I think we need to try something even stronger, which is a kind of like a drug that is meant for cancer patients. And, um, and but microdosing this particular drug is supposed to help you with the psoriasis part of, part of things. Um, and, I, and, and with this particular drug, then you have to test your, uh, take your blood test every three months, right? To check your liver and, and kidneys to make sure they're still functioning right. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good drug to be on. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up, I decided, no, I'm, I don't want to do that. I, I really don't want to. Was it so, all over your body already at that point? That point time, at that point of time, it wasn't that bad. It was like very heavy on my scalp. So I can tell you, like, I used to have to sleep with... I, they, they made this particular cream for me because um, my scalp was super thick, like really, like I would just pull it out. It's like big chunks. You know how do you get scabs? You know how like, you get hurt yeah. and you get a scab? Mm -hmm. It's like that, you know, but like, like you just constantly pull it out. It would itch? Um, oh, of course. Do you think a scab... When you get a scab, it's itchy, right? Yeah. Exactly that. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. So you feel like scratching your head all the time. All the time. So, so obviously because that, that this, it, it's really um, dry and, and flaky on your scalp, you want to scratch it all the time. And so what I would do was um, they made me a special cream, which was, I think it was aqueous cream mixed with salicylic acid and I can't remember what else. It's a bit of tar maybe. And I would put it tar. on my whole scalp. Yeah, yeah, a bit of the tar. Yeah, they love using tar for psoriasis. Anyway. So they put a uh, put a whole bunch on your. I uh, put a whole thick layer on my scalp. I was sleep. I was sleep with a shower cap on, um, and I have to sleep that way. And then in the morning, I will take a long time to kind of wash it all out because then it'll be soft enough to take off. You know, as if, you know, like like taking a scab off. And then obviously, once that's off, then I'm way less itchy. Okay. Yeah. Would you, so that's, would that's you ever have imagined like a skin condition can cause so many, so much discomfort and you have to take so many medication that gives you so many different side effects? Uh, you know what? Uh, I just so happen to have this particular problem. But, um, and it just so happens to be, it's quite a visible one. Although you can't see it right now because I'm on some other very powerful drugs. Uh, <laughs> I'll go into that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you ever imagined a skin oh, oh, condition? Yeah, so, yeah, so, so at the end of the day, uh, to each his own. Um, I mean, you, you have seen a lot of, uh, the thing with skin conditions is that it's very visible. So it's not hard to imagine um, that, that it, it can get that bad because we have lots of examples around us, right? Um, I can't remember what it's called, the one where, you know, the, the pigmentation doesn't form. And so you, you kind of like, so that's, that's like a really uh, visible. Um, again, with psoriasis, uh, so psoriasis is a bit underrated somehow because some, usually for most people, it presents a small little patches here and there. So it's really easy to cover up actually. And generally speaking, it's not on the face as bad. Um, for me, uh, special case, uh, special case. Um, 
Uh, so, right, so I'll just explain, like right after uni, I went into, I decided, okay, let's go natural. I, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, let's try a more natural therapy. Uh, and unfortunately, I was a bit duped. So I would say, watch out people out there, like be careful, really look at uh, what, what is out there. And so they said, okay, get off your steroids completely, go on to this new thing. And what it will do is this herbal thing and it will make, your, it will make it really bad, but that's good. When it's huh? really bad, then you will heal. Then it will boost. So if the idea is I'm going to boost your immune system so high that you will self-regulate. Did it work? No, no. Um. So, so that's where I developed. So I went from just having, uh, so there's many types of psoriasis. So mine was initially plaque psoriasis, which is very wow. common. And then it developed, it, it developed into erythrodermic psoriasis. That sounds like <laughs> that. Uh, which, which is also known in Chinese as the red skin disease because then you're basically, I was red all over. And I think Val, you might have seen me at, yeah. at some point then. Yeah, I was just red all over. <laughs> people always think that, people always say, oh, you had a good time at a beach, huh? I'm like, mm, yeah, sure. <laughs> but no, the answer was no. Um, so yeah, it was cover, I would say 95% of my body. Oh, wow. And on a daily basis, I would have to have a, a bath uh, so that I can soak up the scales. Otherwise, I'll be itching the whole day long. Right. Uh, and of course they tell you, you're not supposed to itch, not supposed to scratch because, and not supposed to even like rub off the, the scales. I said, so I was doing something wrong for a very long time. I'm not supposed to have a long bath because yeah. technically you're supposed to allow it to like build up and stuff, but I just couldn't take it. I was like, you know what? My sanity and my comfort is means, you know, that, that I, I just need that. So I would just, every day I would have like a two hour bath, uh, <laughs> which is why I was always late for morning meetings. I was wow. like, oh, yeah, morning is like bad for me. I don't do mornings. And now I'm just like, yeah, sure, I can do morning meetings, no problem. No, <laughs> because of this miracle drug, which we will yeah. save for later. Save for later. Anyways, sure. but I'm sure, I mean, that affected your confidence going oh, out sure. there. And you were in your formative years, you were still young. I'm sure you were starting out in your career. Like, how did yeah. that affect your life? You know, I can only say this now because I'm on this drug and, and, and which basically clears, my, clears me up by like, 95 percent so that's like literally i feel like a whole different person i feel so beautiful now i'm like oh, it's so pretty. I'm like, oh my god i'm so pretty um <laughs> uh and i didn't realize how depressed i was actually right uh, mm -hmm. i was really really and and but it's just that when you're in it you don't have a choice right you're like you know i just need to be brave i just need to be strong and so that's the that's the persona i put up I, i'm always so strong um but i don't want to be strong i'm like i'm so tired i'm so tired of being strong don't tell me I'm strong. I, ah, sure. I mean, if you had this problem, you deal with it too. People always come up to me and say, oh my God, if this was, if, if I had to deal with this, I don't, I don't think I would be able to go out. I don't think I'll be able to survive. Well, my answer to that is yes, yes, you would, because that's life. You got to get on with things um, and you just have to deal with it. Um, and it's just how you deal with it. And when, so that's, yeah. where, that's where people will tell you you're strong. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, uh, well, you know, it's not a, yeah. <laughs> but when you had to deal with it, like, did you get stares from people when you were at, when oh, you were man. at your worst? Oh man, I have to tell you, there's this one story. Like I was, uh, this was in, uh, yeah, I was in gardens. I was at the, um, I was just at this uh, shop checking out, right? Uh, I was standing there. I was in, like, it was a natural food shop of some description, right? And I was checking out at the counter and there's two ladies behind me talking about me behind my back. Like literally. right in front of you. Yeah. Like literally. And I was like, <laughs> And so I can saying, hear oh, you, why, right? Why is, why is that girl so red? Oh my God, I don't know what problem she has. And I turned around, I said, that is very, very rude. How dare you? And then they have the cheek to say, so what's wrong, huh? <laughs> oh my God, that's horrible. Jeez. <laughs> of course, right? But did you try oh. to explain it to them? Do you think awareness um, should be there so that people don't stare? Oh. Or yeah, so at one stage, I was, I was actually campaigning a little bit with the... Okay, so there's a psoriasis association of Malaysia called PAM, <laughs> um, right, at the Ghost. Uh, so they're really supportive, actually. They're a really cool bunch, and they always have, like, events. But um, uh, so if you have psoriasis, I strongly suggest going to PAM and, and having, a, having a look at that and see what support you can get. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a whole bunch of people just facing the same issue, right? And it's about how do you be more positive in that situation? Um, I would say yes. Uh, and with my work with Pam was I was trying very hard to advocate that, you know, have some civic consciousness, Malaysia. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Don't stare at people. 
<laughs> yes, the answer is look at people. It doesn't matter if their leg is broken. Doesn't matter if you know they're like really hunched over. Just treat them as a normal person, like you would do. Like don't say, don't start the conversation with, "Hey, what happened? Ah, uh? what's wrong with you? Ah." Uh? <laughs> but it's a very Malaysian thing to do. Exactly, it? it's okay. curiosity. I think. And it's very actually, it's very uh, Asian. I would say it's mm. not even just Malaysia. Mm. I would say anywhere in Asia, you kind of get the same kind of thing. Um, but I would say Malaysia quite severe, lah. I mean, of all places, I would say Malaysia the most kipo chi people, um, <laughs> <clears throat> for sure. So guys, you know, and you can't help it, right? You can't help but like, ooh, what's that? Ah, what's that? Ah? Yes, everybody feels that way. But you know, think about how that person feels. Right at the end of the day, if you had that issue, you want people coming up to you left, right, center, and say, "Hey, what's wrong with you?" Ah, uh? that should not be the first. Like even before you ask what my name is, you ask what's wrong with me. I mean, like, what the? Yeah, that's not. That's not. But it's a Malaysian not, greeting, isn't cool. it? Like, they haven't seen you in years and say, "Hey, fat already?" Ah, uh? <laughs> right. Exactly. It's horrible. It's really bad for your self-esteem. You know. Um. So I would say, um, thank you, all listeners of Light FM. Please, please. Uh, just treat everybody as like normal. Nothing wrong with them. If they want to say and if they want to tell you, they will tell you. Yeah. You don't okay. have to like, you know. Yeah. And and, and so versus like my the the serve any service that I get in uh any any other country, people are just like really chill. They don't even like, they don't even bring it up because it's like why do you why do you want to do like how what if what impact are you gonna make on this person's life if you find out what's wrong with them. Mm. You know, okay. are you helping them? No. Are you wasting time? Yes. What's what's the point? You know. So yeah, people think that they're just caring, but actually, honestly, and my mom used to say, "If hey, people are just coming from a caring place," I'm like, "Yeah, but they are not being very caring." Okay. So how did you overcome all these challenges that came your way? Ah, <clears throat> uh, still a work in progress. Oh really? Okay. So of it's still course. yeah, it still hurts. Course, I mean, a, right? Yeah. Of course, like I've had this, I've had this problem for about 20 years. Uh, 20 years, oh my gosh. Okay, um, and uh, you, it, it takes a toll on you for sure. Uh, people don't realize. Uh, yeah, but when you're, as I said, if you're going through it, you just go through it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're going through and everybody has issues, uh, I would say. It doesn't matter if it's a skin issue or a personal issue, or emotional issue. Even if it's not visible, people can still see it. I'm a, well. I'm, you know that you are having it, right? Mm-hmm. So everybody has issues. Uh, that's what I always. But I, I know this. So uh, so yeah, it's just that it's not on, on display. So I think that's the the key thing for uh, psoriatic patients and even eczema. You know, stay strong, guys. I was, don't say. Oh, sorry, sorry. Take that back. I won't <laughs> say stay strong. I would say just you know, live one day at can, a time. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it, and try to keep as positive as possible. And you said something about psoriatic arthritis. Yes. How, how can a skin condition cause joint problems? Arthritis is a joint problem, it. right? Yeah. How bad is it for you? It's, so, you know, it's like it's a building of cells, right? So, it's, it still happens to be skin cells. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sure the technicalities of this. I'm so okay. sorry. No worries. But, but it's, it's one of those things where the way I imagine it is that as if you're instead of building skin tissue, maybe it's building some other tissue around those joint areas and that's causing the, the arthritis. And that's why it's quite common um, if you've had psoriasis for a really long time to actually have psoriatic arthritis. And, and I did. And it was, and it was uh, excruciating. I would say- On your feet after, or on your hands? Oh, oh my God. It was my SI joints, which okay. is your, basically your hip joints, uh, sacroiliac, okay? The sacroiliac joints. And that means I literally could not walk without drugs. I could not walk without painkiller. Oh I could not get out of bed without painkiller. Yeah, yeah, it was really bad actually. Yeah, so that, that's the one that really, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really, like after I got the psoriatic arthritis, I'm like, oh my God, the skin thing is nothing. <laughs> Bring on the skin, I don't I can mind handle anything after this, I can, right? I, can, I can handle the skin thing, no problem. Just, just, just stop with the, the arthritis, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> But at yeah. what age or at what point in time when you start accepting that this is what you you have to go through, you know, are, are you still oh, trying man. to accept this fact that this is happening? So I'm a strong believer that anything that you present physically, any physical issues you have has something to do with your, you know, they call it psychosomatic, right? 
just something to do with how you feel and how you think and certain things that you haven't processed. I would say that that's still a journey. I would, still, I would say that right now, I'm on this very powerful drug that, <clears throat> that basically clears me up as, and I can eat whatever I like. At one point in time, if I, if I ate any, like gluten and dairy especially, I would get more pain. So that was a very good incentive. I lost a lot of weight because I was just like, if I eat this, I'm going to be in pain. Uh, it's a very good incentive to not uh, to, wow. to stay on the diet, I have to say. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, the, yeah the, the pain is next level. It really is next level. But at what age did you start accepting your condition? I still haven't. haven't? I would say I still haven't. Okay. I, I, I think because, as I said, with the psychosomatic thing, I still have it. I'm still on this drug. If I do not take this drug on a monthly basis, I go back to square one. Um, but it's given me a lot of, uh, but I love this drug. Don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful drug. Uh, basically, it's a, it's, a, it's, a basically, it's a drug called the Biologics. It's very expensive. Um, but what it is, is just basically it traced what is that point in your immune system that's causing issues and it just kind of like clamped it. And then, and that's why it's like miraculous. It's like miraculous. Like, wow. Like, whoa. Like I've never had skin like this in, in 20 years, right? Um, but yeah, once you're off it, uh, it, it comes back. So that really sucks. But, uh, but yeah, at least I'm not on any, any other, I don't have to take painkillers on a daily basis. I don't have to, I can, I don't have to watch my food as much, although I really should. Uh, so then it's about working on the psychosomatic side, right? Again, it's about what, what stuff do I have that I have not processed yet? And I'll just share something with you guys. Uh, which is quite personal, but I, I hope this will help a lot of you out there because I present as a very confident, very, um, you know, I'm like, I can, I can deal with the world, no problem. Uh, you know, I'm so strong, but, uh, and I would say I would hide behind that facade of like, oh, I'm so joyful and happy when inside sometimes you feel really like really crap. Um, and what came to my attention more recently is that I do not feel value. I, I do not feel worthy. You know, and I have to tell you, like, I broke my leg during MCO. Oh, another story altogether. Um, but uh, riding my daughter's, uh, my daughter's scooter <laughs> in my living room. Okay. Oh. Anyway, uh, so I, like, I, I see a therapist on a regular basis, but I had stopped seeing her for a long time because I felt like, oh my God, I'm already spending so much money here, spending so much money there. Like, I, I'm, I don't think I, I should not be spending money on this, lah, you know, that kind of thing. And I, it took me to break my leg before I felt, okay, I feel worthy enough. I think I deserve to see a therapist now. I deserve to. <laughs> so I'm just sharing that. It's a, it's a battle, right? Uh, it's not a battle. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's this sense of consciousness and being able to be aware of, of how you're feeling and trying to get out of that loop, right, at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, so I've been feeling this, you know, uh, unworthy, basically. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of people out there share the same feelings, um, but yeah, uh, and it's just come to my attention that I'm just, there's this feeling of unworthiness. I do not have value. I don't know what I'm good at. Um, and that just, that's just something that I have to continuously work on. So I, I used to always look out for approval, right? Like if, if 10 people say I'm doing good means, okay, I'm doing good. And I always want to ask like, oh, hey, 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 how are, how are, is, is that thing good? Is good, right? Is good, right? Tell me, right? Tell me, right? Why do I have to fish for that? Mm. Right, because I feel like I, I only have value when somebody else says I have value, versus how do I develop that value internally? How do I tell people? How do I how do I build up that self value? And that's a that's a continuous journey. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so uh, I think the recent thing that my my therapist has basically uh, shared with me is that, you know, why don't you start a journal? Start. What do you do for yourself? What do you do that you appreciate for yourself? I'm like, uh, nothing. Right. Everything that I do is for somebody else. Right. So she said, well, take pride in like, say, even it can be really small, like making a cup of coffee and you just go like, oh my God, I'm so amazing. I can make coffee. Holy crap. I mean, I mean, I mean, not that, but you know, holy, holy cow. Like I can make coffee. That's amazing. Good job. Good job, me. And write yeah. that down. You know? yeah. And that's how you slowly build that value. Okay. <clears throat> if there uh, was a cure though, if there was a cure to end this completely, would you take it? <laughs> knowing course. what you know. Of course. At no cost? Like, I mean, like... At, cost, preferably and, at, no, at no side effects, right? I mean, but essentially, that's what I'm, I'm on right now. It's a, it's a cure, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just that I have to continuously be on it. What would okay. you sacrifice for that, though? What's the sacrifice for what? The, if, if there was a cure and you had to sacrifice... Like, how far would you go to get it? 
well, I, I would say, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Would I still sell my soul to the devil? I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I got to tell you, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, working, yeah. But what I can say is that what I'm working on right now, which is a continuous journey, it's not a, it's not a quick fix. Sadly, it's not a quick fix, which is, again, really going into what are the issues that is really behind this and can I solve it? Mm. Do you wish that it, this never happened to you? Oh, all the time. I had plans, okay? I had a lot of plans. Um, you know, after uni, I was going to do this and that and this. And obviously, I didn't do that. And of course, my life would be quite different. Yeah. But that being said, at the same time, um, because of this challenge that I've had, it's also grown me in ways that I would, not, I would never have, right? Um, if I had, didn't have this issue. Mm. So, um, you know, it's kind of like, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Uh, I think, I can't remember, there's a book that I read that they were really thankful that they had cancer, right? Because it just, I mean, obviously this person got through it, but more importantly, it gave them a different perspective on life, right? To be more appreciative of certain things. So I can tell you, uh, especially with psoriatic arthritis, and I couldn't move, I couldn't do any exercise, hardly any exercise. And now that I can, I'm like, oh yeah, bring it on. I can move. This is amazing. You know, um, so, so just to be appreciative of that kind of things. And I would say to everybody out, yeah. out there, be, be, be grateful for, for what you can do. The fact that you can breathe. The fact that you can run around, the fact you can walk barefoot on the grass, you know, yeah. Okay, but you are a mom to a young daughter right now. Uh, um, yeah. If she develops some form of skin condition, or if she, if she got some uh, psoriasis from you, what would you tell her? Uh, well, first of all, I have a whole different mechanic, uh, a whole different bag of tools that I can use. Uh, I would not have gone a whole cold turkey oh i would please everybody out there uh do not go cold turkey stop at your western medication and flip to a, a new a new therapy mm. um always if you want to transition do it slowly do it gently do it gentle and be gentle to yourself um i would also say it's it's a constant checking in with your feelings constant um again being aware of what's uh, what's your narrative what are you telling yourself uh, you know, for the longest time, I was telling myself that, oh, I'm so crap. I'm so, you know, I, I'm no good, right? Which is funny because that's what I'm still dealing with now. Um, but it was a bit more apparent. Like, but, but you go through these phases where people say, oh, all you need to do is love yourself. And you're like, yeah, 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 I'm loving myself. I surrender, I surrender. I, I'm loving myself, but not really loving yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's really hard to, to that, that's, the, that's the key. So I think with, with Maya, uh, my daughter, I have to say that I... Uh, okay, so as a parent, like when I was pregnant, I was like, whoa, like uh, on all the supplements, all the anti, like there's like, there this particular like prebiotic that I had to take, which was like, that supposedly it helps prevent your kid having um, eczema or, mm -hmm. or asthma and that kind of stuff. And I have to say, I, so I did, I, and I saw a different doctor to look after my health and a different doctor for my baby's health. And, um, and I'm, I have to say, I'm very, very fortunate to have that kind of support that, I, that you know, my... <clears throat> My parents have been uh, are in a good position to be able to help me on the financial side. So I would say that I'm very very lucky in that in that sense. Um, and yeah, so I so Maya is incredibly healthy. She has hardly been sick. Um, it's it's quite it's quite crazy actually. Um, and I don't know. She doesn't she doesn't then. Not only does she not have any skin issues, she doesn't have a single mole on her body. I'm like, where? What is with this child? How come she has no marks whatsoever? Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, Eugenie, lastly, what advice would you give to someone who may be insecure about the way they look, even though they don't have any kind of skin condition? You know what? It's all about building up that self, self value and self worth. Uh, at, I mean, that's been my experience anyway. Um, and and really, really learning how to love yourself. And I would say uh, sometimes you need help with that. Um, um, I'm, I'm currently with this particular person that does this thing called trauma release exercise, TRE, which is amazing. And really working with the nervous system, which I'm doing a lot of work on. Um, and I would say, yeah, look that up. Um, I would say that, you know, sometimes you go to friends for help and you tell them your problems. Honestly, they can't help you. Um, it's just going to go on. They're not, they're not, um, they're not trained to, to help you in the way that you need that help. They're going to probably just tell you, yeah, don't worry. You're fine. No, la, you can do it. No, no, you're very good. What? You know, I mean, like, 
I don't need that, right? Um, to an extent, that's not the support you need. And your friends sometimes cannot give you that support. So I would say uh, seek professional help if you can. Um, and that would just help you give a lot of clarity um, and at least help you with do, dealing with uh, the things that you're feeling. And, and, and your feelings are very important. Uh, that would be the other thing I'd say, I'll say is really tune into how you feel in your body. Um, a lot of people have not, we always look outside for help, but what about inside? Mm. Have you really sat with yourself? Have you really gone inside and, and explored how, how you, your body feels? And that's, that's, sim that's as simple as, that's the first step. And you will find that a lot of people, that's why a lot of people can't meditate, right? Because they're like, huh, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, you know, I can't even sit still for five seconds. Why can't you sit still for five seconds? Maybe that's, that, that's a good question. You know, can you, how, how can you be with yourself and be comfortable with yourself? And I think that's a key at the end of the day to have that self-confidence um, with whatever issue you're going through.